Anime has often taken great inspiration from its Western counterparts, with Dracula and stories of fanged immortal humans who rise at night and drink blood being a common favorite, it's no surprise that anime has dipped its toes deep into this territory. One of its most successful ventures in the vampire landscape is definitely Vampire Hunter D. Originally a series of novels written by Hideyuki Kikuchi, it has been able to sell over 17 million copies worldwide with its 40 releases and several volumes. This has led Vampire Hunter D into becoming one of the highest sold novels worldwide. Naturally, it went on to acquire manga adaptations. Video games were made, and most importantly, we got two movies in 1985 and 2000 that brought to us the post-apocalyptic world that D fought his battles in. And although this world is rich with history, not much is known about its mysterious protagonist who sticks close to the dark, brooding hero archetype. He doesn't speak much, and it's only through others that we get to know more about him. But even without being told a word, his very introduction lets us know that not only is he strong, but he's different. In today's video, we'll highlight what makes him different and how different he truly is. Half human, half vampire hybrid. The origins of D and his lonely life in a dystopian landscape. The story of Vampire Hunter D is set in a distant future, in a world far different from the one we're accustomed to. This post-apocalyptic world is seemingly the result of the 1999 nuclear war, which dethroned humans from the top of the food chain, making space for vampires or the nobles to take over. These cruel beings had intentionally caused the war to create a world in their image. They combined magic with science, giving rise to mutants, or rather, genetically engineered mystical creatures. Thus, a society where humans and vampires coexisted was formed. Naturally, the humans feared the vampires while the vampires, being nobles, deemed humans to be an inferior species. But there was a light at the end of the tunnel after all, as Hunters for Hire in the previously one-sided battle against the vampires grew to become a thing. With vampire hunters on the loose, there were finally people to stand tall against the threat and eliminate it. With time, the vampire race also began to witness their own downfall due to their dwindling numbers. Some had even resorted to procreating with humans, creating half-human, half-vampire hybrid children known as as Dampiers. Vampire Hunter D was one such being. He traveled across the frontier searching for nobles and hunted them down. Being a Dampier also meant that he was much stronger compared to the average human vampire hunter thanks to his supernatural DNA. Because of his lineage, D also happened to be immortal. We don't know his exact age, but it has been implied that he is over 5,000 years old. Instead of succumbing to his primal instincts as a vampire, D detested the nobles. In the 1985 movie Vampire Hunter D, we witness an altercation in his anatomy where his fangs emerged against his will in front of a scantily clad Doris who had her nape exposed. However, he did his best to resist the temptations and not fall prey to his own bloodlust. It is also implied that D had greater control over his bloodlust compared to other Dampiers. While both pure-blooded vampires and Dampiers felt the overwhelming desire to consume blood, D could go years without it and had built a fair amount of resistance to his carnal instinct. It was D's intriguingly mysterious ancestry that made him so unusual. Within the universe of D's world, the nobles shared a common sacred ancestor, where it was implied that this ancestor was none other than Dracula himself. In the first film, Count Magnus Lee even assumed that D was the sacred ancestor's descendant, which was never confirmed as D denied having any connections to Dracula. The film introduced us to a world where the reign of the nobles was coming to a standstill due to their dwindling numbers. The sacred ancestor had most definitely anticipated the arrival of such an era, and as such, attempted to create hybrids between humans and nobles to prevent the extinction of his kin. D was quite evidently his most successful specimen. All of this went down in the research facility of the Sacred Ancestor, which was located deep beneath Seadock Village and was used as the base for creating Dampiers. Previously, V used to be a conjoined twin where his identical brother boasted a personality that contrasted against D's nature. This twin was cruel, unlike D, which led to the twins becoming enemies. Eventually, D acquired a symbiotic being known as the Left Hand and left the facility after destroying it. Meanwhile, the Sacred Ancestor confined his more cruel brother. Reluctant to witness a world where humanity was constantly threatened while Dampiers like him were created, D went on to become a highly capable vampire hunter. Within this field, D became renowned not just for his caliber as a superior fighter, but also for his astonishingly handsome appearance and reserved nature. He never spoke much, barring the conversations he had to have with those who would hire him to slay vampires. He was not the type to express his emotions and affection either, although he was very much accused of catching feelings for Doris in the film while developing a sense of 
protectiveness toward her brother. Of course, her feelings towards him were more than clear. During the final fight against Count Magnus Lee, who was trying to make Doris his wife, we were also made to see how similar Dee and Dracula, or the sacred ancestor, were when it came to appearance. His superior physical abilities that far outdid the ones possessed by other Dampiers also proved his connection to the ancestor. Dee's unnatural anatomy and his mysterious left hand. As someone with his lineage connected to the nobles, D is immortal. He doesn't age beyond his attained youth and has successfully retained his good looks. This also results in him not succumbing to the physical weakness that comes with aging. Dedicated to his task of slaying vampires, he rides across the frontiers on his cybernetic horse. And this journey is not just witnessed, but also joined by his unusual left hand. We get to see D being the recipient in several one-sided monologues throughout his story. And these monologues are headed by none other than the sentient left hand itself. Due to its symbiotic nature, the hand has a mind of its own, as well as a face. Seemingly a homunculus, the left hand has its own set of powers and abilities which it seldom uses. Considering how powerful and capable D is, it allows the Dampier to handle the battles by himself without feeling the need to intervene. However, if and when the occasion calls for it, it does lend a hand, pun very much intended, to the vampire hunter. For example, when Count Magnus Lee's son, Ray, uses a time-bewitching incense on D, the Dampier is severely weakened by the weapon's light, as it's his weakness. With Ray also using a wooden stake to mortally wound him, D is left in a comatose state. His body lies on the ground, not too far from a mutant that's ready to consume him. Naturally, the left hand is left with no choice but to exercise its independent powers to bring D back to his senses. And so it does, as it absorbs the four elements around it to power D up once again, reviving him just in time. It can also induce sleep, hypnotize others, absorb magic and souls, and measure the supernatural prowess of the enemy to an extent that even D cannot fathom. It can generate attacks using the absorbed elemental matter, transform D into his complete vampire state when on the verge of death, store objects in its pocket dimension, and amp up D with powers that allow him to rival the sacred ancestor. Some of its coolest powers, however, are its ability to absorb evil energy, dimensions, and evil souls. In fact, after D was thrown into the Milky Way, the left hand successfully absorbed and negated space itself, and we don't need to explain to you just how insane that feat is. It isn't until the third book that we get a glimpse of the left hand's origins. It implies that the hand was one of the several hybrids between mutants and demons, also known as the Barbaroys. These beings served in the retinue of Dracula, who used to experiment on the hand to make it stronger than the other Barbaroys. But its strength is not all there is to this mysterious being. The left hand has its very own personality which contrasts the one possessed by D. It's far more talkative and adds momentum to the solo scenes featuring D, as it is often seen sharing its knowledge about the nobles or snarkily commenting on its host. It also gives us an insight into D's thoughts as the stoic vampire hunter is reluctant to do so himself. Why is D simply better than everyone in the movies? We now know how D is so strong and physically superior compared to his peers and the others like him. It's a myriad of powers and their phenomenal execution that helped D attain this reputation. Let's start with one of his very first supernatural abilities that we got to witness in the first film, his ability to regenerate. During a fight against Ray, D was hit with the vampire's ability to warp nearby space, only for him to recover from the physical damage and regenerate. This scene was crucial as it revealed D's nature is a Dampier, since no normal vampire hunter can regenerate from their injury like that. He has superhuman vitality and strength, as seen in the scene where a serpentine mutant tries to drain him of his life force. They continued to suck on his energy, which never seemed to run out, and in the end, D emerged out of that fight victorious. In his final fight against Count Lee, he initially struggles against the 10,000-year-old vampire and his superior telekinetic abilities. However, when on the verge of having his throat sliced, D brings out his own telekinetic power and pins the Count to a wall, while the building around them begins to collapse. Before the nobles in the building can die, he successfully escapes the place with Doris and her brother. In Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust, it is established from the very beginning that D is exponentially stronger compared to every other Dampier. He is feared, hated, and yet renowned as a vampire hunter in an era where bounties are placed on the heads of the remaining nobles. He has gained a reputation for saving people, but he has also been outed as a Dampier, leading to him getting shunned by a great 
portion of society. Meanwhile, D can increase his already phenomenal strength by consuming his own blood. However, others cannot consume his blood to enhance themselves, since it is poisonous to anyone who's not D himself. Anyways, the story revolves around the probable abduction of a woman named Charlotte, who gets taken away by the noble known as Baron Meyer Link. D goes on to realize that Charlotte has allowed herself to be abducted out of her own free will because she plans to marry Meyer. The idea of a romantic union between a human and a noble doesn't sit right with D, naturally, as he dreads the idea of a dampier like him being born out of their love. So he dedicates himself to preventing the union from coming to its awaited fruition. He is able to meet his goal in the movie, but one of the fights also throws in one of his greatest weaknesses as a being with vampiric blood. And this weakness is his aversion to sunlight. Pop culture and media revolving around vampires have always shown how they are active at night due to being weakened in the sunlight. And the same rule applies to D, albeit not as strictly, for he can hold on to a fight for a period of time under the sun. However, once he cannot hold it anymore, he has to be buried for a while so he can regain his strength. Once he's healed up, he goes right back to his mission like a soldier who'd been caught sleeping by his CO in the middle of an op. D's aversion to sunlight is not nearly as interesting as his resistance to it, but the former is common amongst all vampiric creatures. The latter is specific to him. This fact, coupled with his immortality in his left hand, makes him an anatomical powerhouse, as he's got solutions to 99.9% .9 of his problems right there in his body. And that 0.1% that's remaining, well, a good burial can cover that up easily, as morbid as that statement sounds. Marvelous Verdict Vampire Hunter D has managed to become an influential force in the otaku sphere as a result of horror writer Hideyuki Kikuchi's incredible world building that pulls influences from Lovecraftian horror, European folklore, and science fiction, with little doses of cyberpunk mixed in for good measure. The usage of elements such as D's left hand has also created ways in which writers can explore methods of expanding on their otherwise quiet and silent characters. And yet, the movies managed to show us D's emotional sides without taking him out out of his character, as seen in scenes where he is evidently softened towards Doris, laments over the creation of Dampiers, or keeps his age-old promise to bring a flower to Layla's grave following her death. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Vampire Hunter D and his anatomy? Did you enjoy this video? If so, then don't forget to like and comment down below. Until then, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day!